Oh boy, this is uh, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Godzilla lost versus this ape, and it wasn't Kong. Yep, Kong's really trying to. Kong's been trying to outmatch this guy, but he just couldn't get it. And this is, oh boy, this is definitely an embarrassing stain on Godzilla's legacy, but I'm willing to bet that uh, if Godzilla had a rematch with how he is now, he would absolutely dominate the rival, but who knows, maybe there's something in here that will say otherwise and will prove me wrong. And if anything, that'll just show that Kong really needs to step his game up if this is the case. If that, if that is the case, but uh, who knows. <laughs> if anything, I know that... <laughs> Is the the rival and everything is oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. Let's just try it. I imagine it's a touchy subject for Godzilla lasers, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's just jump right in now, shall we? All right, on the right count, and everything good to go. Godzilla fanboy alert. This episode will depict scenes featuring Godzilla getting his ass handed to and repeatedly bested in combat by a member of the great ape species. Yep. Fanboy discretion is advised. Yeah, I jeez, I can only imagine what the comments are going to be like. I need hopefully I remember to look at some of them. Uh, well, we'll find out. No, seriously, dude. If you can't handle a little bit of monkey beating up a big chunky lizard, leave. Yeah. Are they gone yet? Okay. Good. <laughs> Today on Goji oh, no. Center, the analysis platform will shed light on one of the most infamous members of the great ape species of all time, Berserker Titan, known as the Rival, yep. whose most notable feat was to kick Godzilla's ass out of his own crib long enough for Godzilla to come back for a rematch. Yeah, and from what I know, he kicked his ass. He, Godzilla got his ass handed to him like badly too, from what I heard. I didn't look at the comics or anything or know too much, but I just heard that it was like an extremely embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> An extremely embarrassing defeat for Godzilla and a huge and a stain on his legacy. But uh, hey, who knows? If he was to face him again, he he probably wouldn't even need to evolve for him now. But what do I know? I don't know much about the rival, and like I said, I could be proven very wrong with that. But let's find out. After many many years, subscribe to learn more yeah, about. Yeah, I did hear that whenever he came back for a rematch, the rival wasn't the nowhere to be found instead he ended up getting found by a uh, tie mat i think yeah or i'm sorry doormat gotta keep that <laughs> i gotta keep that <laughs> man tie mat really isn't getting any respect from me anytime soon is she <laughs> like, oh lord titans dinosaurs and other cool monsters now to be completely Wait, honest the... titan Oh, or and other cool mon Is that the Arc Giga for- Oh, I think that's the um, video he had where he had dropped the uh, Arc Giga in the Skull Island now. Since he did that, he should see what, it hap what happens if he dropped the Arc Giga in uh, Peter Jackson's uh, Skull Island. Well, after the Indominus is done with there, yeah. Monsters. Now, to be completely honest honestly, here- and, and th Honestly, if that was the case, the Giga would probably just dominate if we're being real, though. Like, the only thing that would actually be able to stand a chance there would be King Kong. If- he even could. I don't know. It depends on who gets more of a blood-rusted, blood-lusted rage. Yeah. There isn't a lot of information about this Titan floating around, so mm. just keep in mind that some of the things mentioned in this episode may not be 100% proven true. But rest oh, assured, okay. we'll do our best to speculate only upon already confirmed facts. Okay. For those of you who are still here and still have absolutely no idea of who we are about to discuss, don't worry. <laughs> like how he said, <laughs> oh, so we're still here. <laughs> Yeah, there probably were some Godzilla glazers that already left, probably. <laughs> we'll give you a really quick rundown of who we're talking about, what happened, followed by a Titan breakdown, along with a speculative explanation of how it beat Godzilla, and obviously how this dude met his end. And it's quite gruesome, so make sure you stick around until the end. The rival appears very briefly in a sort of flashback that Godzilla himself had in the graphic novel Godzilla Dominion. This book pretty much follows Godzilla as he travels around the planet establishing order, his dominion, amongst all the other rogue titans and some humans stirring up trouble around the planet, finalizing with Godzilla taking back control of his old lair. Right. It's in this lair yeah, where he- me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this takes place like right after King of the Monsters, though. 
had his first recorded standoff against Titanus Tiamat. Yep. But before Tiamat took over this place, there used to be another Titan that lived here. This one, the rival. Yep. The book tells us that Godzilla originally came to fight this egg, pretty much for a rematch. Very quickly, we see this image. A really neat detail about this picture is that this is a snapshot forever ingrained in Godzilla's memory. Mm. Similar to how you remember that image in elementary school of that big bully that beat you to the ground when you refused to give up your lunch money, this scene is what Godzilla kept in his memory when he was getting his ass whooped. All right. Note how this image is taken from a low angle looking up. Mm. Yeah, that's the image Godzilla kept in his head before he took off running, holding a grudge that would last for hundreds of thousands or maybe... Curious as to how many... Uh, curious of how some Godzilla glazers feel about this image right here. Cares to know how they feel. Probably isn't great. <laughs> millions of years. Up next, we'll discuss some cool details about this ape. Enjoying this episode? Make sure yep. you subscribe and help support the channel by checking out our merch store. Yep. Yep, Admittedly, in this episode, we'll be doing the absolute most by milking the crap out of this image to analyze this <laughs> titan, since this is all we have. But not to bore you with really? this image, that, the 3D artist... That? That... Is that really the only image we have? Well, damn. Goji Center came up with a speculative reconstruction of this ape. As you can see on both the image and 3D model, the rival was an animal that was pretty much scarred up. Yeah. Another animal that was similarly scarred up from another cinematic universe was Peter Jackson's <laughs> King Kong, yeah. featured in the 2005 film. Both of these show signs of being veteran fighters, being resistant to pain and repeated injuries, and no strangers to the spe- well, yeah, I guess that is, huh, when you think, yeah, that is so definitely something that I guess that is something the rival would have over Godzilla, or not Godzilla, King Kong experience. Because, I mean, if he def if he has, like, scars and shit and everything, and he's been alive for a while, that is something that King Kong would have, uh, or the rival would have over King Kong, when you think about it. Well, although I don't know how much that would help. Like, I'm pretty sure King Kong could, well, I don't know if the King Kong could kick the shit out of this. With the, gu with the beast glove and the axe, most likely, but uh, without all that, I don't know, it'd definitely be interesting, though spectacle of blood and gore. We'd argue, however, that this one looks a little more crazy. Yeah. Drew Johnson, the artist who illustrated guy. this book, did a great job illustrating the crazed maniac that handed Godzilla a humbling L. We find that this guy is quite muscular, similar to Kong, who had quite the physique compared to the other great apes that he encountered. Height-wise, we aren't entirely sure about this, but surely a height tall enough to rival Godzilla at this point in time. Speaking yeah, of which, there's something that we need to make clear here, and this may help explain why this great ape was able to not only defeat Godzilla, but send him running. It was mentioned by the author of this book that this confrontation involved a much younger Godzilla in his late yeah. adolescent years. There's yeah, no that is, that is true, he was younger and uh, less experienced and everything from what I know. Probably wasn't that powerful and all mastered with uh, his atomic shit either. Well, I'll know, I'll find out mention of how tall or heavy he was at this point in time, but our best guess is that he was a little shorter than his appearance in 2014, Possibly. and perhaps a little bit more lean. Somewhat similar to his appearance in the Bikini Atoll incident seen in Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Here, Godzilla would measure a bit shorter than 350 feet in height. If we do assume that the rival was more or less around the same size as Kong, we're looking at an ape that seemingly does have a good chance at beating the lizard. Mm. At the point of Godzilla's flashback, we see that unlike the younger Gojira, this Kong was already fully grown. A yeah. veteran fighter with potentially hundreds or even thousands of years of experience under his belt. More yeah. specifically, this Titan would have a repertoire of complex combat maneuvers, learned to craft many kinds of weapons, and may have already encountered a Gojira before. Mm. Or animals like Godzilla, as to- Yeah, I, I believe it because like, they had the whole damn Titan War or whatever happened back then too, so... It wouldn't surprise me if it had a few tangos with a few other Godzilla species. Who would have a say? <laughs> oh, so yeah. how exactly did this guy manage to defeat an atomic lizard with atomic breath? Well, based on where this happened, we may have some answers. The confrontation between the rival and Godzilla was very likely instigated by the rival himself. Since it's 100% clear who kicked out who in this situation, we can pretty much draw up how this played out. 
One day, Godzilla was simply chilling in his lair when all of a sudden this great ape barged in catching Godzilla off guard. Why off guard? Well, we do know Godzilla has very good senses, granted they were not as good at the time. Godzilla's senses became many times more powerful after Mothra passed down her powers during this scene in King of the Monsters. Mm. Before this, Godzilla did have good senses, but in this case they weren't good enough to detect a big ape entering his house in time. This ape managed to stealthily walk up to the door of Godzilla's lair and pick a fight. Now that we got that out of the way, let's try to figure out the obvious. Why didn't Godzilla, with atomic breath, defeat a great ape with no blast abilities of his own? Yeah, could... that is another question I would like answered, because, you know, I'm pretty sure just one atomic breath into, like, a vital area of, like, any great ape is, like, enough to just kill one. Or at least I would think so be two answers to this. One, given the size of this lair and its rocky composition, this Kong could have leveraged this rough terrain and used it against Godzilla, dodging any atomic rays heading in his direction and using the terrain itself to block the impacts, eventually closing the distance between them and beating down the young Gojiro with pure blunt force. Mm. Or two, perhaps in this case Godzilla refrained from using the atomic breath in this fight. I now, guess. why on earth would Godzilla do that? Let's yeah. go back to this scene in Godzilla vs. Kong. If you remember well, it only took one atomic ray to send the interior of this temple collapsing. A cavern similar in size, if not bigger in space than the lair Godzilla was in, using this atomic breath could have spelled doom for Godzilla himself, yeah. sending the entire cavern crashing down upon both of them. This is just a theory, and by all means not a canon explanation at all. But if true, it could actually speak to Godzilla's own virtue. Any high testosterone and enraged Gojira would definitely fire away with atomic blasts and in the act destroying the enemy, its home, and ultimately himself. Yeah. However, if Godzilla did indeed decide to retreat knowing it could have won if he used the atomic breath, this may have been the very first example of Godzilla pulling off a tactical retreat. Hmm. Knowing that one day, when it grows up, it would have been able to physically take on this ape without using its atomic weapon, yeah. and in the act, destroying his own house. <laughs> this may explain yeah. why Godzilla refused to fire his atomic breath when he was fighting Tiamat in this same exact location. If you oh. remember, Tiamat nearly defeated Godzilla in Dominion. Had it not been for the sudden change in terrain, Tiamat would have pulled off a win. Mm. Here, using the atomic breath would have been risky, potentially making Godzilla destroy his own lair, trapping himself, or worse, killing them both. We aren't trying to downplay the rival's win in any way. Yeah. After all, this is a theory, and Godzilla still could have used his atomic breath against yeah, it. And even then, like, it's still like a good win regardless, like... Is like, you know, if smart enough to pull off a win like that, or at least assuming he was smart enough to pick a fight in here, or if it just happened out of nowhere, I could have just been a nice coincidence of being in a cave in a place where it refuses to, bla to blast him and everything. Yeah. And, uh, well, being able to run him off too, so yeah this ape, but whether he did or not didn't really matter. The point is that this guy won. Yeah. However, and it's important to bring this up now, there's also the matter of the author of the graphic novel suggesting in an interview that this guy may not have been the only ape present in this oh. scenario. In a podcast oh, interview- So you mean to tell me my boy might have gotten jumped? <laughs> As that's the case, that, that would explain it a bit more. Viewing the author, he mentions that a singular Kong specimen, or several, came in and pushed him out of here when he was younger and weaker. Mm. Note how he uses the word or, meaning that either one may be true or not. Okay. Whether this was just to appease the no, Godzilla fans, who it's knows? It's a possibility, and yeah, <laughs> that could be. That could also be another possibility, just saying that to appease Godzilla fans. <laughs> So, does this negate everything that we have just discussed? Until more official evidence surfaces, no. we don't know for sure. Yeah, we need more official evidence to, for anything concrete, so right now it's pretty much just speculation now. Yeah. But the only concrete evidence we actually do have here is the fact that the book itself portrays Godzilla having beef with one particular ape and not a whole group of them. Specifically hmm. mentioning that the said rival was the one ape who used to dwell here. Hmm. Godzilla's rematch was with this dude specifically, not any other ape that may have been there watching Godzilla get his butt handed to him. So, now yeah, that's the case, I think we can uh, rule out some. Um 
the possibility of more apes being there, because I'm pretty sure he would ha remember more if that was the uh, case. Yeah, like, he'd have, like, a whole hit list of, like, I'm gonna get your ass, get your ass, and your ass, and your ass, and your ass, and yeah, you get the point, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe it was just a singular rival, yeah. We've got that out of the way. What? Or at least that is my theory on the subject, yeah. Watching Godzilla get his butt handed to him. So, now that we've got that out of the way, what happened after? In Godzilla Dominion, after defeating Tiamat, the G-Man started wondering what had happened to the dude that had originally kicked him out. Why wasn't he here when the G-Man came back for a rematch? The answer is quite frightening, and it has to do with this one, Tiamat. Year 2019. During the events of Godzilla King of the Monsters, Monster Zero, also known as Ghidorah, let out an alpha call to yep. wake up all the Titans. One being Tiamat, who at the time currently resided near Stone Mountain, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Shortly after Godzilla killed Ghidorah, Tiamat went in search of a new home and found it best to settle in Godzilla's old lair. Yep. The author of Godzilla Dominion, Greg Keyes, specified that it was Tiamat who killed this ape at some point in time. Damn. We just I thought I thought he just died over time because it was old or something, but nope. T-Mac got his ass. <laughs> I don't know when exactly. Oh. The most obvious oh, yeah. answer would have been right after Godzilla King of the Monsters, with yeah. Tiamat pulling up to this lair and killing the Great Ape, who at the time had to have been very old and not the combatant it used to be. Mm. But there's a Possibly. bit of a plot hole here. It would have really? taken a long time for the corpse of this Great Ape to rot and reveal well, yeah. this skull by the time Godzilla arrived, yeah, meaning true. that Tiamat would have killed this ape a very long time ago, mm. before the events of King of the Monsters. Yeah. But let's pretend for a moment that Tiamat did kill this ape shortly after the year 2019. Is there an in-world canon explanation as to why this ape's corpse rotted so quickly? Maybe it, uh, maybe time had, um, drained its corpse, question mark? I don't know. There might be, actually. Now that we know for sure who killed this ape, we need to delve deeper into the abilities of Tiamat that may shed light into this mystery. Hmm. The Monarch Titan dossier of Titanus Tiamat explains that this animal can release a phosphorus ink that bleeds through the water, which hmm. serves to blind opposing titans. Phosphorus is a chemical element that, if touched, can cause poisoning and corrode skin. Mm. White phosphorus, more specifically, can not only cause deep, painful burns, but also penetrate underlying tissues and break down flesh in record time. All right. So, what happened to the rival? This guy may have had to endure the most painful death yet. Possibly. A titan like Tiamat who can boil the water surrounding her with scales and fins that serve as blades and with a phosphorus corrosive ink that breaks down flesh? It's no wonder the only thing left of this ape was its bare bones. Yeah. This would have been a grim sight to see. Not oh, to mention Jesus. that this skull is detached from the rest of the skull. Oh, and just like that, seeing, and seeing this image, just like that, all the Godzilla glazers are happy once again. There you go. <laughs> Well, until they find out that it wasn't Godzilla who did this. Yeah, then they're not so happy. Then they're just like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> Skeleton. So, apart from being painful, this ape suffered a humiliating end. Oh, yeah. That was a good video. I, uh, it was definitely a lot of good theories going through with the whole thing. And I, I actually do want to see more about, uh, the rival in it. Actually, you know what I think would be cool? I want, I want to see, uh, the rival get, uh, Jurassic Parked or something, if possible. Because, you know, get some blood and make a clone of it and everything. And then have, like, a new Titan to fight or whatever. But it's like, uh, well, then again, I guess we already had the Scar King, so we don't need another Monkey Titan, do we? No, no. So, yeah, never mind, scratch that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm curious to know what you guys, what kind of theories you guys got about this and everything. If you got anything to add on and everything, because I'm curious to know. And, uh, do you think Godzilla would be able to kick the shit out of the rival with the state he's in currently? Because i definitely say so. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely would. I mean, he's already able to beat Kong all by himself and... And most well, yeah, he can definitely be the Scar King. Let's not even bullshit with that. He can totally, he can kick the absolute shit out of Scar King. If Kong can beat him, then so can Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video now. So if you enjoyed it, check out the original one, which will be linked in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.